I just wanted to thank you guys for taking some time out of your day to be here with me today. It is special, and I appreciate you guys. So hopefully I deliver as much value as possible to you guys. That is my intention today. So um, does anybody know much about functional medicine, or is this new to everybody? New? Kind of. Sort new? Of or some things. Some things? Yeah. A little bit? I know. Some you know? things. Some things still. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots there's of things. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. First question I want to ask you guys, like, who's encountered some type of health issue in their life? You don't have to tell me what it is. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, we can extrapolate this data, even though we're at a trauma conference, and we can basically push it everywhere. Like, everybody has experienced something in their life, right? And the problem is, a lot of times, we don't have the tools, or we don't have the knowledge, or, like, we just bump into a wall of, like, I don't know where I'm going, right? And so then you guys find yourself here looking to help yourselves, right? and or help somebody else or bring somebody else. And uh, the other question I want to ask you guys is do you believe that you are here or in your health or current state wherever you are right now because of one event or because of cumulative events that have brought you here right now? Who is one event? Anybody here by one event or cumulative, right? So I think that we all can agree that health has a cumulative effect on our bodies. All of our choices even if it looks like it's one thing, right? It's always a bulldoze issue. And then one thing may appear to have caused the symptoms, but you don't, and oftentimes what we look at, like, you know, you have all this thing and then all of a sudden, like, I tripped off a curb and I broke my leg. Did you really, like, your leg got was so weak that you tripped off a curb and broke your leg? Do you really think that's what happens? Or do you think that uh, me skateboarding for 15 years compounded and then weakened my bones and I wasn't feeding myself enough nutrition and resting and exercising and then I happened to fall off this curb and break my leg, right? Oh, so, so that is kind of what happens to ourselves and our health and that's really what functional medicine goes. It goes to the deepest layer of what's happening with you and where you're at in your health. So this was me when I was 21 and I'll get into the story in a second and uh, yeah, it, it sucked. <laughs> so I had an allergic reaction, I had mono, uh, they diagnosed me with strep throat, they gave me penicillin, and like, this is virtually the color of my arm. Like, this is not like that off of what color my entire body was, and my face was swollen. And so like, this is the thing, like, we have to make sure we know what we're dealing with. Like, we don't want to be uneducated let's get that off the screen so we don't have to see that. So we want to be as educated as possible about our health, right? And I think that's why all you guys are here. You want to be educated about your health. So this is basically where I came from. So, you know, I basically, as I was growing up, so number one, I was a C-section, which is important. And the reason I'm going to go through these sequential events is because like I talked about in the uh, Q&A and all that is like, your timeline is so vitally important for your health so vitally important. If you've never done a timeline of your health and you're dealing with something, I suggest that you do a timeline. And start with your parents or somebody that knows about how you were born, right? Whether that be a C-section, whether your parents were healthy, whether somebody was toxic before you were born, right? What the relationship of your parents was during your utero session, right? Because it's all so important. So do that timeline, I'm telling you. It's going to like light you up as far as like what could be that one thing. And even if you see something that you're like, I can't deal with this right now. That's okay, right? Like just know that it's there and like this is easier for me to deal with so I'm gonna come to this place first, right? And so whatever that is for you, that's okay. So born as a C-section and growing up every single year, I was once a year, I would be severely sick. I remember in, in eighth grade, uh, seventh or eighth grade, I had pneumonia and I was out of school for three weeks. And so being a young child, like, that type of illness, like to me, that doesn't that, like if I was a prime, if I'm somebody's care provider now, I'm like, wow, like something's going on with the immune system. Clearly, right? Like clearly, something in in the body's imbalanced. I didn't sleep well. I always woke up with tons and tons of uh, panic attacks and nightmares and all this stuff. And so uh, all this is going to start accumulating, right? You can see the birth. We have the illness once a year. We have the immune system imbalance. We have the sleep not optimal right and sleep is super crucial uh when i was a teenager excess marijuana use and i know we're in a state that is legal for marijuana use and some of you may use it but i can tell you if you overdo it uh similar to alcohol i'm not a big supporter of either of these because i think that they have hugely detrimental effects on you and i would choose marijuana over alcohol actually but 
the effects, like the cumulative effects over time, it, I just, I just can't see it benefiting you. Do you have like a tiny minute window where you could just talk about the effects of excessive marijuana use? Not that I have that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk about some CBD and effects of cannabis. Um, so I do believe that the plant is effective. I and, and I believe that in some cases it can be effective, but as far as like. THC overabundance in the body, it's kind of like a, a, a revs uh, system, like you get the munchies when you have THC, right? So if somebody's in a wasting condition, it would be extremely effective for them to have this, right? They want to stimulate their appetite, but if you're always revving down on this pedal, it's basically like, you know, driving a car at 100 miles an hour all the time, like you're gonna burn out at some point or another. Not to mention like there's potential toxicity, or I don't know how you're ingesting, but if you're taking it through your lungs, your lungs are your, your vital organs of life. Like they assimilate your oxygen. And if we wanna go as far as like things of importance and what you should address first, it's like, how long can you live without air? Eight minutes, maybe. That's long, right? How long can you live without water? Two weeks, a week, a couple days, I don't know. How long can you live without food? A month maybe? So like, the, and then like, okay, so like, if you have emotional trauma, how long can you live? You could potentially live your whole life, right? Not to say that the quality of life is good, but like the order of the most important things that you should address, like need to happen and how vital they are for your survival, right? And then obviously then integrate all of them at the same time. So does that answer your question? Do you want me to do any more? I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll address it a little bit more. Do I have a little slide for you? And then actually for me, marijuana use turned into extreme anxiety. Like extreme, I was having panic attacks after smoking, ended up in the hospital. So obviously like as a teenager, you're like, what's the best thing to do? Like, why don't I just start drinking and stop smoking, right? Like that's smart, right? <laughs> Super smart. So I started drinking, college breakup at 21. So here's an emotional charge. And then uh, mono, three months after that. And I had a lymph node on my neck the size of an M&M &M peanut. And I was like going to the gym and I was like, man, my neck's really sore, started to swell. And I went to the doctor and I was like, hey doc, like I have this you know, lymph node that's swollen and like, I don't know, I, I don't feel well. And he's like, oh yeah, it's definitely strep throat. And I was like, okay, can we culture this? Like, it's very easy to culture something. Like it doesn't take very, like you literally like gag on a stick, right? And then you get a culture in. So I was like, He's like, no, I'm positive. So he gives me the medication at that time. I wasn't holistic. I ate a little bit better than normal, but um, yeah, so I took the medication and then I ended up like that picture you saw in two days, waking up at three o'clock in the morning, itching and sweating, having an allergic reaction because penicillin will react with your liver enzymes and mono elevates your liver enzymes. <laughs> so then I ended up back in his office and I said, hey doc, I'm itching and sweating and I'm having this allergic reaction. He's like, oops, yeah, you have mono. You shouldn't be taking that. And I was like, Awesome, that's great. So this is why I'm saying when I said, be your own advocate, listen to your intuition because you are literally your guide. You need to find, if you're looking for health advice, you need to find somebody that you feel comfortable walking with and that when you tell them something, they listen and you guys have this symbiotic relationship for your health and your healing. Because that's really what functional medicine and any practitioner that you work with should be. It's not, I don't like, the practitioner doesn't need to be barking orders like a drill sergeant at you. It's like. I need to listen to your body. What's your body telling us? What's our mind telling us? What's our, what's our emotions telling us? And then we listen to that. And when I talk about your inner intuition, I'm not talking about this subconscious pattern that we have. You have like, I'll talk, I was gonna drive home from my friend's house one night and I get the goose, I already have the goosebumps driving because this is absolutely nuts. It was like 11 o'clock at night and I drive home and uh, yeah, it's so crazy. I, I saw I'm driving home and uh, I, as soon as I stepped in the car, I had this feel like don't blow through this intersection. I know this one intersection, I always kind of coast to it like slow and the light will change and then I won't have to stop and I'll go right through it. And as soon as I sat in the car, it was like, do not do that today. And I was like, okay. So sure enough, I come to that intersection, super fast intersection going this way, 55 miles an hour. I'm slowing down, of course, the light starts to turn. And today I listened to my intuition and so I stopped and I let the light turn green and then boom, this car, 60, 70 miles an hour, blows through the red light and that would have been my driver's side. So that's the intuition I'm talking about, not the like mumbo jumbo that we can program our subconscious to, right? So 
that's intuition, and I, I, I can't even explain that to date, but that, if that's the biggest exaggeration of what an intuition is, you have that on a daily basis, if you can really hone in and tune into that. And then afterwards, I had three surgeries, umbilical cord hernia surgery, that they told me I had since birth, and then I had to get it resutured, and then I broke my arm skateboarding, and after this, um, whew, let me tell you, surgeries in mono, and uh, drinking and smoking pot for excessive periods of time did not mix very well because I was down. I had anxiety, I had depression, I had no energy, I could barely care for myself, and I was 22. Just graduated college, just moved to Tampa, Florida, and I couldn't care for myself, so I had to move back. I had to, well, thankfully, my parents welcomed me back and, and helped me out because I literally was a disaster. And uh, yeah, so that's, so if you look at right there, if I go to anxiety and I just chase the anxiety, what am I gonna get from our normal day situation, right? If I just go chase my anxiety, people are gonna start talking about my traumas. They might try to get me on Zoloft, right? If we're talking conventional. And is that really my issue? If I just laid out my timeline for you. You saw what my timeline is, you saw where my toxicity came from, you saw what my habits were, what built up, and then all of a sudden, you know, I had uh, a surgery, and it won my last surgery, and you could maybe say that it was because I broke my arm. So it's cumulative, and when I was in that position, I still wasn't holistic, and I still didn't know anything about my health, so I went to doctors, and I went to four or five standard practitioners, and I was like, hey, these are my symptoms. I have anxiety, I have depression, I have no energy, I don't feel like myself, and they ran my labs, and standard lab ranges are like yay big, right? So if you're not like, didn't just get mono or you didn't just get a viral infection or you didn't just get something right now, like your body does a really good job at trying to normalize itself and stay in homeostasis to the best that it can at all times. So if you're not sitting outside of these huge numbers, you're not, you're not sick. And so four or five different labs, you know, like this is what healthy looks like. Then of course you're sitting outside of those lab ranges. And they're like, you need to go see a psychologist. So I was like, okay, fine. Like, I'll do it. Whatever it takes, I'm ready to do it. And they're like, here, you need Zoloft. Like, you're clearly crazy. You need to take something. And I was like, wow, okay. And so I called my friend and I was like, you know, I have anxiety about taking this medication. <laughs> so you have anxiety about taking medication that's going to help your anxiety. And I was like, yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but like, I just can't do it. That's not the answer. So going onwards, then we found that like, Literally, I was like, whatever it takes, I'm gonna do it. I found a new, bumped into a newspaper. My mom and I were looking and I saw a lady that said nutritionist. And at this point, I was not doing well at all. And I just wanted somebody to like acknowledge that I wasn't well. That's all I wanted. I just wanted to like, okay, we're both here and we understand where I'm at. So now we can walk together. That's your symbiotic relationship. And so like, finally I found that person. They're like, wow, you're really not doing well. And it's just like, thank you. Like that's all, like all of us, we just wanna be heard. Right, we just wanna know, like, I, I don't want you guys like, you come to me, you, oh, oh, Billy, can you help me? Oh, you need to change your diet, like, okay, cool, like, what did that do? Like, anybody could like say, I can change my diet, but like, you need to be heard from where you are right now. Like, that's where the power is for you. That's where the healing is gonna come from. And so I just wanted to be strong. I wanted to be know that I was worthy of being healthy because I didn't feel worthy because I had so many illnesses in my life and I just wanted to be a normal person is what I used to tell myself. And oftentimes growing up, I had so much anxiety as a kid and I didn't sleep well that I would watch cartoons and I would literally think to myself, man, it would just be so good if I could just be a cartoon. And that's like, not a, I don't think that's like a healthy thought for like a 10 year old, like, I don't know about you guys. Anybody have any questions so far? Like I say often, like all practitioners aren't created equal. There could be great practitioners and then they just may not be for you. And that's okay. It's okay. We're all in this just to find our own health, right? And so for a practitioner that may have helped you, may not help me or may not help you or helped you, may not help you, like it's okay, right? And so we need to like be less uh, attached to, to the actual practitioner and more focused on like, where are we gonna get our outcome from and what's best for us right now? Because we're all so unique and this is why I always say it depends because everybody's health depends because nobody's the same. Nobody has the same genetics. 
can't extrapolate an Eskimo diet in a lab study that said they ate high fat and it, their heart disease was super low and give it to this person that's Middle, European, Middle Eastern or European and say that they need to eat high fat too. That doesn't make any sense. Like it all just depends so much. So for myself, what worked for me and why I got passionate about this is uh, supplementing, getting really mindful, taking time for myself, listening to myself. Like I would step out and I would get some anxiety about like literally going bowling with my friends and I would be like, okay, this isn't the time for me. And it was just honoring myself because we're in this super busy world of like, you know, constant nonstop strive, strive, strive that do we ever really like take a step back and care for ourselves? Like, do we ever take a step back and like when your best friend's saying like, dude, I know you're tired, come out, come out to dinner with us on Thursday night, like, and you feel pressure, you're just like, no, like, this is my time, right? And that's, that's super important. I think that the mindfulness and allowing, allowing your body to, to basically heal itself, and uh, that's why for me, I think that health is basically the pinnacle of like our life. If you don't have your health, I don't care how much money you have, how are you gonna enjoy it if you have anxiety and depression and no energy? Like, what are you gonna do with your speedboat if you can't even get out on the water because you feel like crap? Right? So like, your health and your mindset, like, is your investment to get you anywhere you wanna be in life. I got better and it just felt like something was missing. I basically like still wasn't, wasn't feeling super resilient and like it was stuff felt like I was missing. My sleep wasn't still on and uh, this was after like three, four years. So if anybody like, I don't know, man, like I used to think that when I got healthy, I'd be like, okay, it's cool. I can go and like start eating. Like I can eat like occasional McDonald. That's like what I thought and told myself. This is a crazy story. It's total BS. Um, I was like, yeah, like I'm gonna get resilient and then I'm gonna go do this. But the matter of fact is that like, once you start training your body, like think of your body as like a, a blank car and whatever gas you put in it, it's gonna perform like that. Like that's really how your body starts to operate. So I remember I was at this uh, gaming tournament. We went to, the Wendy's was the only thing open at two in the morning because we were running a gaming, gaming tournament. And it's like, okay, I'll just try it. And I had like so much anxiety after I ate the food that I was just like, okay, I understand now of what I'm doing, like, it's like, I'm moving in this direction of like, I have, to, I have to be healthier because I want to feel better and I want to be feeling better so that I can perform better. And that like, when I do that stuff, like it just doesn't work for me anymore. And like, it's just accepting the fact that like, you can just be different and be okay. Like, I don't say that you guys shouldn't drink or smoke or do whatever you want because it's your life. You have one life, you might as well do what you want. But when like, when I go out with my friends, from back home where I grew up, they know I'm not gonna drink. Like, they've already tried it on me. Like, I'll just be the DD, and I'll drive you guys home safe, right? And that's just who I am, and like, people will accept that once you, you accept what direction you wanna go. And that's just for, for whatever it is for you. So, what functional medicine, this is what the basic definition is. So it's medical, nutritional, emotional, spiritual practice or treatments that focus on optimal function of the body and its organs, usually involving systems of holistic or alternative medicine. And when I say medicine, I'm not talking about like medications, I'm talking about like plant medicine, nutrition, uh, uh, CBD oil, I mean like, you know, different things that are gonna just basically help the body get on track, right? Because we're just trying to care for this vessel. What can we do for ourselves? And then, I also want to take a big time because like, so the immune system is, plays a critical role in our body, but does anybody know what the immune system does when it's not fighting pathogens? It's always fighting. It is, but there's a huge other part that the immune system does. Anybody know? It repairs all of our organs. So if you are in like this and, and when, when it repairs, is when we sleep. So like sleep is so, so critical that like, just respect your sleep. And then I, and the reason why I put some of the, a lot of these things up here is because it's things that I have to teach myself over and over and over again, right? It's like sleep is so critical, critical because your hormone balancing, your endocrine balancing, your immune system is balancing and repairing itself. And then we have glymphatics, 
which is a newer term, some of you guys may have heard it, is uh, basically lymphatics in your brain. And so this is how your brain detoxifies itself through the glymphatic system, and it only happens when you sleep. Maybe a little bit of exercise. But that's the main function, and it's, it's got its own pulsation, and it happens while you sleep. So sleep is like, who doesn't want this? Now I'm gonna switch uh, gears just a little bit. So in my opinion, we have like nutrition's pretty pretty well known. The endocrine system's pretty well known. The hormones are pretty well known, right? We could obviously go extremely into detail, but I want to enlighten you guys on a newer system. It's called the endocannabinoid system. Is anybody familiar with that? A little bit, yeah. So the endocannabinoid system um, is basically like a governor of all of the systems in the body. So we have the immune system, we have the kidneys, the nervous system, the reproductive system, the respiratory system, the muscles, the skeletal system, the endocrine system, the digestive system, and the cardiovascular system are all tied together under one system called the endocannabinoid system, and it's basically the greatest neurotransmitter in the body, meaning that is going to control and help every single part of the body. So when every part of the body is being controlled by one thing, if you're focusing on some of these things, technically we're looking at downstream effects. And if we know anything about functional medicine, which is why we're here today, we want to learn that, we want to get the why, we want to ask why. Like that's literally, if you could take one thing away, just like ask why times 10 of every single situation that you have, because you'd be like, I'm tired, why? Well, I didn't sleep that good, why? Oh, well, I was stressing, why? Just keep asking why to the next level and it's gonna get you eventually where you can't ask a why anymore and you're sitting there and that's like, I don't think I know why after this point, right? And there's, your an there's one of your answers. Just keep asking the why to get you upstream as far as possible. So functional medicine is basically a very fancy term for asking why, getting you to the root cause of where you're sitting at today. Does this yeah. run along the, the fascia, the fascia um, integrate with the fascia? Through the mm, for the no, so that's a, good, that's a good point. It's more of like a, it's kind of like a chemical messenger system. Okay. Yeah, similar to like the endocrine, like hormones in your bloodstream through the cardiovascular system and stuff like that. I mean, we don't know exactly how everything works. We can talk about it, right? But we can, like, we just know that it exists. And I feel like every every couple of years, like the, the research changes so much on everything. Like what 50, 40 years ago, what was known to be truth of low fat diets is now what? The truth to be high fat diets, right? And like the truth that red meat was bad, now like if it's grass fed organic red meat, it's good, right? Like so all these things, don't eat eggs. Now eggs are really, it's just like, it, the research is somewhat biased in all, all regards always going to be slightly biased because there's so many factors going in at all at the same time you have to look at like what quality of the food like if you were truly taking like a food study you need to have like organic food and then compare it to conventional food and see what the difference is for these people like but the research that's not what the research is about it's more about like medications and, and stuff like that's like heavily dominating the research so another thing I, I will touch on is like I feel like we went from one extreme of no fat and now we're sitting at another extreme of all fat. And so like, I'm not a big fan of like super extremes, to be quite honest with you. Because how do you go from going no fat to all of a sudden like, I, there's no doubt that we need to make our bodies more fat proficient and burning fat for energy rather than all sugar all day, right? But going from none to none doesn't make too much sense to me. It seems like we're just going, we're going from here to here and we're missing the middle. Cool. And so this is where we are controlling. We have mood, memory, motor control, immune system, reproductive, pain reception, appetites, sleep, bone development, and it's an adaptogen, meaning that it will help you regulate. So we're gonna to get to your question about marijuana and THC is really, it's, it's really the THC um, that is not an adaptogen, it's a stimulant. 
And so how can you get some endocannabinoid support? So in my opinion, I think that hemp oil is going to be one of your biggest proponents. And uh, the reason why antibacterial, it inhibits, so this is the research. It inhibits cancer cell growth, it's neuroprotective, it, it, uh, it basically stimulates bone growth, uh, reduces seizures and convulsions, reduces blood, uh, blood clotting, can you see that one? Reduces function in the uh, overactive immune system, um, in inflammation reduction, arterial blockages reduction. I mean, who doesn't want all this stuff? Reduces pain, anxiety, uh, slows bacterial growth, suppresses muscle spasms, tranquilizing effect, which we need in our society. <laughs> all this stuff from one plant. In my opinion, when we're going at like supplementing and we're talking about changing our foods, it's like, what can we do once that's gonna have the biggest global effect overall? Right, so that's why um, I'm talking to you guys about this because it's like, if we can have a global effect slowly with a couple things, do we need to like go after vitamin C individually? Do we need to go after like all these things individually all at the same time? Or can we just try one thing and then see if it will have a global effect and then take us to the next, and then try the next thing, right? And add on, rather than being a junkie at the supplement store like I used to be and be like, oh, I just need vitamin C and B vitamins and like D and all this other stuff. And I was like, how long is that gonna last for? Yeah, anybody got questions so far? Yes, sir. With the CBD, the, can you recommend or suggest what the dosage of that should be and how many times a day you should take it? That sort of thing. I mean, I've, I've looked into this. Yeah. It's, it's just it's kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. And just the terminology, I mean, full spectrum versus CBD oil Correct. versus hemp oil. It's, it's yeah. All, it's all pretty confusing. I would agree with you. And we will get into that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have all those answers for you. All right. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. I wouldn't introduce something that I think is so impactful. So we have the timeline, right, of our health. We have the ideas of supplements. We know how to find or at least get uh, comfortable with the practitioners that we may want to pursue, right? We have, like, we're, we're kind of building this up for you guys. And then, um, so I just, the other reason I wanted to go over this, so it's basically been like kind of one of the oldest things for our, our society for humans in existence, but um, the US got it banned, call, calling it marijuana from cannabis, passing it based on chemical companies in the 1937 so that it could get banned so that hemp wouldn't compete with chemicals because it competes better than chemicals and it competes better than paper. So that's basically what happened. And then just recently we got approved farm bill to be able to grow and uh, big pharma can't really own it. So I don't know what's going on. There's actually one medication that has CBD in it. It's called Epidiolex and it costs $30,000 per dose. And it's only made for children. So it's kind of crazy. And uh, it's now legal in all 50 states. So CBD, when we talk about functional medicine, the goal is to get you to homeostasis, which means you are balanced. That's why we have to look at all of these different fields of our thoughts, which we, and I always recommend like, just take some time to make a conscious decision of what you want your thought to be and your emotions to be. Even if it's too difficult right now to get you there, at least you're starting to create the habit that like, hey, I'm looking for this emotion. Because oftentimes we don't ever like think that we can control our emotions. We let the exterior of our lives dictate our emotions. And then those emotions turn into traumas in our body and they harbor and they block our body's ability to assimilate nutrients. They may keep us in a fight or flight situation. So I would suggest practice that. Homeostasis comes with conscious thought because if we don't start regulating our thought process, we're gonna end up with a system when we're older, of it running by ourselves and we're not really knowing what's going on and we may have these patterns going on that we have no idea what is going on, right? So we wanna start choosing and noticing and becoming conscious and mindful is a big word that we use. Mindful of like, what are my patterns? Every time I get into a relationship, I start doing this weird thing that's self-destructive. Why do I do that? Every time I like wanna eat something, every time it's nighttime, 
every time it's like whatever is going on, just like be conscious of yourself. Say like, what am I doing right now? And then you'll start catching yourself doing things that you're like, why am I doing this? And that's literally like such a fundamental part of healing yourself, which is becoming conscious. And so basically we're looking for homeostasis and the endocannabinoid system is the, the engine of homeostasis, meaning it, it's basically the runner. It, it is the vehicle of balancing out our body. It balances our body. It helps with nerve function, movement coordination, immune system and inflammation, energy intake and storage, cell life cycle, apoptosis, uh, reproduction system, hormone levels, implantations. There's so much of this going on that like, you know, how many people know people that are trying to get pregnant and like are having difficulties? Like it's rampant, right? And it's because we like burn out this endocannabinoid system and then we have toxicity, we have all these things going on and we, it, it's like, it takes forever and, it, and it's unfortunate that you have to see people that like really want to, I have a, a dear friend who's actually a, uh, trying to get pregnant and it's like not working too well and it's, it's sad to see, you know? And uh, so like this is why it's just like, start taking, you need to start empowering yourself now. And that's why I always suggest the organic foods is because can we reduce the amount of toxicity that we're exposed to consciously as much as possible? And organic food's gonna do it. Um, not fully, because the pesticides are in the rain, but at least they're not spraying them directly on it. So we should drink rainwater? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't drink rainwater. I feel like the best way to harvest vegetables is have them in this greenhouse with a filtered water system that then comes out through the sky, right? Of uh, it's filtering out all the stuff, and then it's only putting pure water into these plants, and, and then the truly, love into the water. exactly, yeah, yeah, you're spinning it and putting ultraviolet, and then and then it's watering the plants, and then like you compost those plants. It's a bomb greenhouse. Yeah, I know. I have this idea in my head. I'm like, man, that'd be awesome. <laughs> So one day, um, but yeah, so that, that would be like the truth of what organic food would be because then you wouldn't have any contaminations from the external environment. And unfortunately, like there's so many chemicals out there. That's like, it's like a hundred thousand chemicals a year that we're producing new. And then we wonder why we have so many issues today. Like it's just like, and then we're, and then we're, we're creating these antibiotics and we think that we need to worry about the bacteria, but our bodies are made to fight bacteria. I mean, that's kind of where, where we're at today in our society. So I'm not trying to scare you guys. I'm just trying to enlighten you guys that like, and I always talk about this as well. I didn't put this in the slide, but like women, your body care is incredibly toxic. Your makeup, oh. your hair, your perfume, like there's literally an article that like you put on 137 different new chemicals every single morning before you leave the door. Unique chemicals on your body if you aren't conscious of what you're using. Every single morning before you step out of the door. And then we wonder why we're having implantation issues. We're having you know, reproductive issues and uh, like, I love you guys. <laughs> I want you guys to be well, so. Um, yeah, just, just think about that, like perfume, like your shampoo, your perfume, your like, just get conscious of like, what are the things I'm using? What am I cleaning with? And uh, what is it doing to my health, right? Like, do I know what these chemicals are? Look at the, look at the labels, right? And then like I, I said, vote with your dollars. Just get conscious of like, okay, what, what am I buying? And what is it doing to my health? This is like pretty rudimentary stuff that like we've lost because we've trusted our government and other things to like basically like look out for our own well-being. And unfortunately it's capitalism and it's not conscious capitalism and we're not looking out for our consumers and our people. And so I just want to go over two, two, uh, two functions here and then we're going to get into your uh, THC slide and I'll wrap this up and then I have a handout for you guys that covers my, my fundamentals of what I like to do um, to keep myself healthy. Um, and I think it's kind of a good starting block. So anatomide is basically like uh, it's a component in uh, cannabinoids, and so it's basically pleasure, food intake, reproduction, sleep, pain relief. Um, if you have a deficiency, you're gonna see anxiety and stress. So it's like all these things that we talk about 
in my mind and like kind of conceptualizing it, it's like you have these emotional traumas, you have these physical traumas, you have these spiritual traumas, these nutritional traumas, and what do they do? They burn out this <laughs> endocannabinoid system, and then what happens? We all have the same thing, right? We all get anxiety, stress, depression, lack of energy, right? And so the system gets burnt out, and just like living in our society, like, you know, how long ago, like, you go back 100 years, and we were living on like farms. And look who we are in 100 years. Now look at our society. There's, our entire world is designed around cars. We have computers. We have computers in our pockets. Like it's crazy how fast we're evolving, right? And so our, our endocannabinoid system is feeling this, and this is what we get. And so this, this hormone or this cannabinoid basically bridges the body, the gap between the body and the mind. And then what happens when we get anxiety and stress? How effective is this gap in us? We become disconnected, don't we? And our body and mind communication dissipate. And it's also released during ovulation. And it's oxytocin. And it, it's basically, it's produced during meditation, yoga, and runner's high. So it's, you know, pretty powerful. And then there's one other ones that I want you guys, called 2AG, regulates the immune system, supports balance, it's neuroprotective, release when tissues are injured, and it regulates our energy balance. So between those two, like, who doesn't want to, to get a little bit more balance in those two? Right? I think everybody could use balance in those two. And so this other one I wanted to just read real quick is uh, the endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome. In 2004, <laughs> that's like 15 years ago, and like we're just starting to hear about this stuff. Migraine, fibromyalgia, IBS, and related conditions. And these are kind of like conditions that like nobody really knows what's going on. They all have clinical similar biomarkers, uh, basically to an underlying endocannabinoid deficiency that may be treated suitably with cannabinoids, right? These mystery illnesses that we're all like, man, I just don't know what's going on. And I've seen some of these people and it's difficult, right? There's always an underlying toxicity. There's always an underlying emotional balance. And even when you get them a little bit better, they can have relapses very, very easily. And it's showing like, this was in 2004. Who's heard of this? Yeah, well, you're a Canadian. <laughs> we don't do that stuff here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so like looking at this, like when I say like, have you ever heard of the 80-20 rule? So you get like 80% of, let's say like traffic, or let's say like if you're in a business, 80% of your revenue will come from 20% of your customers or 80% of your traffic will be driven on 20% of your roads, right? And if you think about that, you can extrapolate that to all of your life. And so for me, I was like thinking about, it. I was talking to my, my, my friend who's a chiropractor in California. I was like, man, like, wow, that, it started blowing my mind. And I was like, all right. And then if you take that 80 and you go to 20, you can take 20, that 20%, then you can take 80% and break it down to the next level. And you can keep breaking it down until you get one. And I was like, okay, so what's the supplement that I could use for people that's like, gets that? And like, it's not vitamin C. What is it, a multivitamin? I don't know. Like, what could it be? And like, is it a probiotic? Like, there's so much missing with a probiotic. Like, sure, it can help you assimilate more food. And I was like, well, what about like endocannabinoid system? And that's why like, I've been integrating this into my lectures because it's a superfood, it's got omega fatty acids, it promotes cell membrane flexibility, which is humongous, right? It helps, our cell membranes are basically our ability like to our cells to survive and to communicate and to create um, energy, our mitochondria. If we don't have cell membrane flexibility, we are going down. And toxicity diminishes your cell membrane flexibility with free radicals and all this other stuff. So. This is basically like build cells. It's got all these B vitamins, it's got folic acid, magnesium, calcium, iron. And then we come back to this. So here you go, here's your THC slot. I knew it was coming somewhere. So here's indirect reaction. THC basically comes down here and bounces off. It's not in a direct reaction. Side effects of THC are anxiety. It's so funny because so, I smoke it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But if you do, uh, trust me, like, if you do it long enough, this is what's gonna happen, but maybe because you're here, 
and maybe because you have a little bit better uh, access, I guess you would say, to better quality stuff, that the real reason you're getting effects to anxiety is like the CBD affects the cannabinoid receptor, the opioid receptor, the dopamine, and the serotonin, and what does it do? Depression, anxiety, depression, addiction, 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 pain. Wow. So you can have this, <laughs> but it only jacks on this indirect reaction on the cannabinoid receptor. It doesn't, it's not in these. And the CBD is actually what's doing that. So you may be getting those effects, but it may not be from the THC, which is then getting you high and having you, you know. Well, it's funny because it's, it's like a hit or miss. So sometimes I'll smoke it and then I'll like feel okay. And then sometimes I'll smoke it for anxiety and it'll make the anxiety so much worse. Mm -hmm. Not panic attacks and shaking and all that kind of stuff. So. Interesting, because it's the it's a gas pedal. Yeah. And you know, there's different types and strains, and there's there's toxicity if you're not smoking organic pot. So it's like, yeah. like that's just the world we live in. We have to find the sources of what we're going after. We need to find like, is this organic? Is it healthy? Can it can it benefit me? And then like this is health studies. So I told you I'm not the biggest fan of all the health studies because they all can be flawed. But like when there's this many, like anti-convulsion, cytotoxic reduces breast cancer cells antagonizes uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha in rheumatoid arthritis. So it helps with rheumatoid arthritis. 5-HTP is a pre precursor for uh, serotonin, antidepressant, uh, apoptosis, antibacterial, effective against MRSA. Where do we see MRSA? Where's the most prevalent? Hospital. Hospitals. Yeah, where do we use antibacterials the most? Hospitals. So are we, are we, is our problem chemicals? Or bacterias because the chemicals are ruining the bacteria our bodies are made to fight bacteria but now we have chemicals intermixing with our immune systems causing an imbalance in our ability to fight virals and bacterials which we already know how to do and where is it where we use chemicals there's literally a study out there you can google it that using so uh, receipt paper has BPA on it and so if you uh, basically and if you use that so if you use an antibacterial soap or wash or whatever you want to call it, lotion, and then you go and touch a BPA, your absorption will be 100 times more of the BPA, which is a known endocrine disruptor. It will disrupt your hormones 100 times more if you use antibacterial soap before you touch that because you're killing all bacteria. You're not just killing bad, you're killing good, you're killing everything. So, and that was on the news in, in Atlanta, I think it was in Atlanta, so. It's like, it's crazy. So I'm just gonna leave you guys with this. I know I'm like, so this is integrative wellness. So at a very, very simplistic form, mindfulness, become mindful, move. Uh, I mean, we're living in this society that maybe 100 years ago we wouldn't need this when our food was more nutritious for us. But I want you to stack your odds in your favor, stack your health, stack your mindfulness. All these things, we're stacking our health. So if you're, I would suggest supplementing yourself because if, if, if not, like, I don't know, it's crazy. And then consciously eat, get more conscious, I'll give you that. And then here's the full spectrum hemp oil if it interests you. It's got all these things in it, vitamins, flavonoids, terpenes, cannabinoids, and it's full spectrum. So full spectrum is what you want. That's like taking vitamin C out of an orange, right? An orange may, perceive only five milligrams of vitamin C, but with the uh, terpenes and flavonoids and other things that are in it, it multiplies it and it has the effect of 1500 milligrams when it's in the orange and it's not extracted. So you want that, that's what you want. And um, as far as dosage go, what I suggest, so hemp is a bioaccumulator, meaning it will literally suck toxins out of the soil. So it has to be organic, has to be organic because it can be used as a field cleaner. And then the one thing you want to look for, you don't want to look for the uh, dosage, the, like the amount that's in there. You want to look at, is it tested to be absorbable? Does the body absorb it? That's what you should focus on for a dosage. How do you know that? They don't do studies. There's only a few companies that have ever done studies that will willingly put it out there. And there is no THC in the CBD oil. No, you said no, no THC. And that's what you recommend. Right. Will it be totally no THC? No, it'll be like 0 0.01, 0 0.01.
0.001% or something like that. So like it's in there, but like you're never gonna test for it. It's not gonna show up on a drug test. It's not gonna do anything negative to you. Do you know the companies? The companies? Say, could we be yeah. so bold as to have your <laughs> uh, The company that I use is called Zilis. Z-I-L-I-S. And that's the reason why I, I use that is because it is, has all of these things that I look for. It's been tested. It has a board. Uh, people are putting their name on the products, right? So that's that's. Is basically. it American or? It's yeah. Mm -hmm. 